The purpose of this screencast is to learn how to use for loops in MATLAB. When dealing with for loops, we consider two different types. The first one being scalar, and the second one being vector. When you are dealing with scalars, you will typically get a scalar answer out of your for loops. And when dealing with the vector version, you will typically get a vector answer out of your for loop. Now use for loops when you know the number of times you want to carry out a process or you can easily find out the number of times you need to carry out a process. If you don't know the number of times you need to carry out a process, there are other loops that we'll talk about in next videos. But for now, let's focus on for loops. So the general format for using for loops is, that fo is as follows. The first thing you write is for, then you write your index variable, then you write the equal sign. Finally, you have where you want to start, where you want to end, and how much you want to increment by. Having done that, you can write your lines of code that needs to be executed, so whatever you're calculating, your calculations essentially. And at the end of the loop, you finally write end. So without further ado, let's consider the scalar version of for loops. In this part, we're asked to add all the numbers from 1 to 100. So we go back to our general format and we say, OK, the first thing we write is 4, 4. Then you write the index variable. In this case, our index variable is i. Then you write an equal sign, an equal sign here too, where you start, colon, increment, colon, where you end. So here we're starting at 1, incrementing by 1, and going up to 100. Note that i is not a vector, it's a scalar. It will only take one value at a time. So at a time, it can either be 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, but only one value, so it's i is a scalar. And this is what we're calculating. So when you get to when you get when you're doing scalar uh, for loops, you should always initialize your variable that needs to be manipulated. Actually, that's a general rule for all for loops. Here, we're saying total is equal to zero because before you start adding all these numbers together, the count of total is zero. So we'll say total is equal to zero. Then when you get to this part, this line of code, for i equals 1 to 100, the first value that i will take is 1 because that's where you're starting. So right now, i is equal to 1, and then it goes into the body of the for loop, and it says total is equal to total plus i. Now the current total we said was 0 and i is equal to 1 so total is equal to 1 now. Then you go back up here and you say okay now the next value i is going to take is 2 because you're incrementing by 1. So i is equal to 2 now so total is equal to current total plus 2 so 1 plus 2 and that gives you 3 then you go back up here again and you say okay the next value I will take is 3 so what you should do is total is equal to total plus 3 current total is 3 and adding 3 to that will give you 6 and it will keep doing that until you get to 100 so the last value I will take is 100 that's your ending value the value where you will end so I is equal to 100 so it goes back into the body of the program and says, okay, total is equal to the total plus i. At this point, i is equal to 100, and you should get 50-50 as your answer. Now, a quick way to check whether or not our code is right is by using the sum function in MATLAB. So let's say y is equal to 1 to 100 sum of y. So you see that it gives you 
50-50 and that is what we expect to get let's let's run our for loop so I'll run this section and it says okay total is equal to 50-50 which is what we got from the sum function so our for loop is indeed correct so that is how you use the scalar version of for loops the next version we'll consider is the vector version now here we're asked to find values of y equals x squared for x goes from 1 to 10 so once again you initialize the variable that needs to be manipulated here we're going to be manipulating x so we'll initialize that variable outside of the loop so x is equal to 1 to 10 so x is a vector that is of size 10 and it starts at 1 so it goes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then you follow the basic format for using for loop to write this part once again i is equal to 1 to length of x so why do we write length of x a lot of times you will not know the specific length of a vector but you can easily find it out by doing length of x so you do that so you know how many times you need to carry out a process so you say i is equal to 1 to length of x because x could be here we're told that it, it goes from 1 to 10 but that not may not be true for real life scenarios where you don't know the input that the user going is the user is going to have the user could have 100 inputs or 150 inputs so it's better to take the length of your input so in this case if x was our input we would, we would say length of x once again i is a scalar so the first value we'll take is 1 and then you go into the body of your program and you say okay so the first value in y is equal to the first value in x squared so x has values from 1 to 10 so the first value is 1 so you say 1 y is equal to 1 squared so the first value inside of y is 1 then you go back up here again now i takes a value 2 and you go back into the body so this y of 2 so the second value in y is equal to x of 2 the second value inside of the vector x to the second power so you go into the sec x vector you look at the second value inside of it in this case it's 2 so you bring that 2 over here so this is 2 squared so that's 4 and you're going to store that into y of i i as of right now is 2 so you're going to store that into the second position so the second value is 4 you go up here again and you say now i is equal to 3 so y of 3 is equal to x of 3 to the second power so you look at the third value x of 3 so you look at the third value inside of x the third value inside of x is 3 so you said 3 squared is 9 and I'm going to store that into the third place inside of y. So 3 squared is 9 and you, you store that into the third place, the so first, second, third, and so that's 9 right here. And then you finally get to the length of x. In this case we end at 10, x ends at 10. So you say the tenth position if i is equal to 10 the 10th place position in y should hold whatever is in the 10th position of x raised to the second power so we go to x and we look at what's in the 10th position in this case it's 10 and you raise that to a second power so 100 and you assign that to the 10th position in y so the 10th value in y is equal to 100 and that is essentially how you use for loops in MATLAB